Today we'll be doing tutorial number five, and this is for the unit VU2339, and this will be the final drawing in this series. We're doing the soft face mallet and producing um, some working drawings. If we look at the soft face mallet, just from a glance, we can see it's made up of four components. So it looks like a handle, a head, and two ends. So this will be another assembly drawing. So we'll set this up straight away um, as such. It won't be a, a bottom-up model where we uh, design each part individually and then bring them into an assembly file. So we'll be doing all this in one file. Now, I did cover this many, many years ago, but like the center punch, I believe I can do a much better job this time. So if we look at the unit of Compsy and what it is we're trying to achieve today, so this is written by the Victorian government, obviously, being a VU unit means Victorian unit. Um, it's requesting the unit states that it, it just wants simple 2D uh, drawings and simple th uh, three-dimensional drawings, okay? Uh, you know, that are relevant to AS1100 standards. More importantly, if we scroll right down to the end here and we look at the critical aspects of the evidence, um, you've got to be competent starting up, operating, you know, basic functions and shutdown of the CAD system in accordance with enterprise procedures. And like I just said before, produce simple 2D and 3D drawings to conform with work instructions. So that's why we're basing these models off actual projects that you'll be machining in the workshop. So let's get started. Uh, open your data panel, ensure that you're saving your project today into the right um, folder. Okay, and that is also part of the unit. Make sure that you understand, um, you know, renaming folders and that sort of thing. Um, we will, I will save it here in, in the series where I've been doing this for you the whole time. And I'll close the data panel. Let's save this straight away. We're going to call it Soft Face Mallet. Okay, we need to, straight away, we need to put in three new components, okay? And remember I told Tortured this the other day. We can do it like so, but it's much easier to right click on the top and go new component. Always name your component. This will be SFM, soft face mallet, underscore, handle, save. We'll do another one straight away. Create a new component. This will be SFM head, underscore head next one will be right click new component and this will be sfm soft face so we now have our three components in our tree and once again if we look at this here this is the parent file and these parts will be ch children or child of the parent does that make sense now we have to activate the handle here, so make sure you click the little white button. So don't forget to select that because we must design the correct assembly file, all right, or the correct part. Okay, click create a sketch. Now we're going to be doing a sketch revolve. I'm going to be moving quickly, so remember to stop and rewind if any time you get confused. Clicking on the front face, which is the, is the blue and red work plane, L for line, and we're going to drag to the left, snap it at the origin, drag to the left, and before you terminate, I want you to type in there 280. Okay. Now, I will fit this to my drawing and just zoom out a little bit and pan over so you can see it. I'm going to move my dimension down. This is quite involved, this little sketch here. It's, look, it's not hard, but if you don't pay attention, you'll lose it real quick. Alpha line. We're snapping on the left-hand point, okay, and we're dragging out. We're just going to do that at 9 millimeters. Now remember, of course we're drawing half the handle, we're going to revolve it. We're working on radius dimensions here, not diameter um, figures, all right? Alpha line. I'm going to drag in a little bit, then straight up and straight across and stop it there. Now we need to put some dimensions on this. So this dimension coming up here, that will be 5. And this dimension coming up from here, Notice I'm aligning the dimensions and putting them correctly in line. It doesn't really matter, but it helps to sort out your workflow. Um, this top dimension here, so this top line, or we can click the point, that point and that point, drag out. This will need to be 10. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at that and zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, so we've got 9 and 10. So when I revolve that, that will be a diameter of 18 and that will be a diameter of 20. 
All right, you'll notice that these starting lines now are all black, which means they're fully defined. We're going to start on the right hand side now. So alpha line, we're going to come up and watch this little one. It's, it's not going to be that hard. One, two, notice they're all 90 degree perpendicular lines. And I'm going to escape from that now just to do that shape there. I'm going to put some dimensions in. So this line here to that top line, that will be 10. All right. Now see how that went a bit crazy there. So I'm going to drag this up a little bit and drag this one up here a bit. All right. To zoom in. D for dimension, this line and this line. Okay. That's going to be six. Okay, so what we need to do now, that there needs to be 10. And that there needs to be 20. All right, so there's the end of our mallet. So one more line now will be a diagonal line, so alpha line. And join that there. Notice it's a diagonal. We'll need to put a dimension on that line now. So we'll click that line and that line there. And this will be 178. Alrighty, so we're ready to revolve that now. So we'll finish sketch. Notice the entire sketch is black, which it's fully defined. Uh, finish sketch, we'll come up to a home view here, zoom out a little bit, create revolve. Um, ensure that the profile is the profile you just drew. Axes will be the X axes and click OK. We'll say new body, click OK. And there we have our soft face mallet handle we need to create a thread on the end of that so create a thread and this will be a full thread and it'll be m12 by 1.75 click ok we need to tell fusion now that this is steel so we're going to right click on the mallet handle and go physical appearance and it's probably as defaulted probably is steel but anyway i'll just double check this as well come all the way down and steal and drag that onto the handle. Click close. We want to knurl this handle here. So I select that face, press A for appearance. I type in knurl. And we're looking at steel knurled and I'm just gonna drop that on the face. Now, it's not gonna be a really nice looking knurl. It looks a little bit big, but anyway, it gives us that graphical appearance that it has been a knurled uh, applied to it. Uh, click save. Now remember that when you thread this on the lathe, you'll have to put a bit of an undercut in there with your parting tool or chamfer the mallet head because the thread won't screw all the way on otherwise, okay? So let's start on our mallet head now, all right? So we've click save, activate the head. It's paramount you do this and you must remember to do it at all times, okay? So check it, we're working on the mallet head. I just finished on the handle. And there's the handle there. You can see if I rebuild it, okay? Mallet head, activate it. Create a sketch. And we want this side plane here, this red blue plane. C for circle. Snap to the origin, drag out. Okay, type in 32 and enter. Do another circle. Type in 12 and enter. Drag your dimensions out so you can see them if you want to change them later. We can finish sketch now. We want to extrude that circle now. So E for extrude. We want symmetrical. We click that profile. And as we drag it, it will appear on both sides. Okay. So we're going to type in 75 divided by 2. Okay. Which is 37.5. And there we have the mallet head. All right. Click save. We need to put a thread inside that now. So create, create a thread. And once again, this will be M12 by 1.75 pitch, which is a standard metric thread, all right? Now, remember when I activate that, these are just cosmetic threads, so they show in the drawing. If you were 3D printing this, you would click model thread, okay? And it would actually physically put the thread in there. We don't want that, okay? We just want an appearance, remember? So it shows up in the 2D drawing. So it'll be a cosmetic thread, which looks like a picture of a thread. Righto, so what we need to do now, we need to actually scallop out the side of this cylinder and we'll do that on the milling machine. So we're gonna deactivate the handle here. We're just gonna turn the, the eye off, okay? And we're gonna come around to the side to work on this face here. We need to construct a plane on here. So we're gonna put a tangent plane. We're gonna click that face and click okay. 
So we can see we've got a, a, a plane on that face down. We can work on it. You can see where it's intersecting. We're going to zoom in on that face, create a sketch, and click that plane we just created. R for rectangle. We're just going to drag a rectangle over here like that. You can actually make that 40 if you want. Okay, and enter. You can see here now. But the critical thing is that the plane must extend past the round cylinder. Okay, so we need to put our dimension on here now. And if you think about this, it was the model 75 mil long. So take away 25 is 50, half of 50 is 25. And if we click there and type in 25 and enter, that works well there as well. All right. Now I can pull this out a little bit so you guys can see it on the camera here. It would be uh, wise to put a dimension on here as well so from that point to that point. And we just notice that here it will change. See how I just bring it out to the left. Okay, so 40 take away 32 is 8. So half of that would be 4. Okay, and now that sketch is fully defined. So now we can cut that. So extrude, cut it. And let's go negative 3.5. Okay, and let's check that now, what it looks like. Inspect that line to that line is 90.975. That look, that's good enough. All right. Okay, so we can come back here now to our home view, turn our handle on. And I'm just going to come around a little bit and show you this here. Now, this is a little trick we need to do. So now it's time to go to the parent file. Okay, so up to the parent, activate it. And you can see this here now. Notice they're not together. Control Z to undo that. What I'm going to do now is put on a joint. So assembly, a joint. I'm going to click. I'm just going to turn the handle off for a sec, the eye. Sorry handle off. I'm going to pick that midpoint on that face. Now I'm going to turn the handle off, turn the head off, sorry, turn the handle on, come back around. I'm going to click that face, hold the command key or control key. On a Mac it's command, on a PC it's control. And I'm snapping to that there. I turn it back on and click OK. So now you can see that my hammer is screwed on up in there, but there's no thread in there. So we're going to cheat. We're going to go combine. Okay, here's my combined feature. It's asking me for the target body. The target body is the head. The tool body, the cutting tool will be the handle. I want to keep the tool after I do it and I want it to be a cut. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. Now, watch the magic. If I turn the handle off now, you can see that it is cut and put a threat in there and everything. All right. So that's the beauty about doing it in a top down this is not a, a true top-down model procedure, but there's some aspects of top-down modeling that I'm showing you here at the moment. Okay, that being done now, we can now start on the soft face Maladin. So we're gonna activate the soft face um, component here in the tree, activate it, create a sketch. We're gonna click that front face of the head. See that? Zoom in, we're gonna go C for circle. Notice Fusion show me where the center is, see that? And I snap it to there, I start again, and I snap it to there. There's two circles there, and they're the exact same size as the mallet head. Finish sketch, back to our home view. E for extrude, I need both profiles, and I type in 25 and click OK. I now turn the head off and the handle off on the eye. I'm going to come around here. I need to expand the tree here on my soft face and activate the sketch that I just created. See that? E for extrude, click that face, pull it out, type in negative 25, enter. We can now turn that sketch off and de-expand that. Create a thread, click that face, fusion you'll have to tell it that it's M12 by 1.75 and click OK. And there's our cosmetic thread. All right. Once again, if we're 3D printing that, remember, you can actually use a model thread and the thread would be there. See that? But we don't want that. We want just a cosmetic thread. All right. Back to here. Zoom out. We can turn our eye back on. And we're going to activate it at a parent level and fit it on our page. Now, even though the, the soft face is there, notice it's not actually locked in. So the beauty of this one is that we can create an as-built joint. So as-built joint, one, two, 
play it to show you that it's locked in. Okay. What I need to do now is copy this. We've done it once, okay? So let's copy it now and save it up here. So we click on that in the tree, right click on that component and go copy. Go to the parent file, right click on the parent and go paste new. Make sure you select paste new. Now before you get too carried away, drag it out of the way, okay? Click okay. Now we're just gonna amend these, okay? We're gonna call this one, the first one we did, we're gonna call it nylon. The second one we did, we're gonna call it aluminium. Okay, and I'm just gonna delete the one. All right. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because that original unit of competency that I was showing you actually stipulates in there that you have gotta be able to change uh, file names and stuff like that, okay? So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it. Okay, so we need to shove that up the hole on that side there. So we're in the parent, notice we're still in the parent, it's activated, assembly, joint, okay? I'm gonna come around here, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna turn my handle off so you don't get confused. Pick that face, hold the control key or the command key, see how I wanna snap it in there, see that? Boom. Handle back on, I'm gonna to come to my home view, I'm just gonna arrow around once. Click that face there, just touch it, sorry. Touch the face, hold the control key and snap it to the middle, see that? Bang, and it's locked in. Remember, if yours goes in opposite, you can just press the flip button, but mine went in the right way around. Okay, click save. Right, we need to uh, put some appearances on here. We can turn those joints off so, that, so they're not annoying us. So we can just turn the eye off, see that? Okay. So let's push, um, first of all, let's right click on the head and we're gonna go physical material, that will be steel. Oh, it's already here, see that? It's already there, but we can find it down in the tree down here as well, in the selection, steel. Okay, I wanna come back up now and I wanna find plastic. Oh, aluminium, sorry, so standard aluminium. Aluminium, we're gonna drop it on the tree, see that, aluminium. Now we're gonna find nylon, so we're looking for plastic. Plastic, ABS, acetyl, nylon's usually the one we'll put on there. Nylon, we'll just use nylon six, doesn't really matter. So I can drag that onto there, or I can put it onto the tree. It will either work both ways. And click close. So there's our 3D model. Make sure you click save. If I rebuild that to show you, um, I can press play down in the timeline and we can see how I did it. Okay, we can also cycle components on. So if we go inspect, component cycle toggling is shift N key. Okay, and if I wanted to modify anything in that drawing, so if you're one of my students and you're having a problem, I'd actually use this function, I'd go shift N Okay, and I can look down on the timeline, I can see exactly what you've done. You've created your components and I can read it like a book. So the handle's that color, so anything to do with the handles under that color. Purple is at a component level. You can see where I'll put the joints and stuff on. Okay, it's quite easy. You can see green here and the blue for the mallet end. So it's a pretty little cool trick to unshift in to turn it off. Okay, let's start the 2D drawing now by right clicking on here and going create a drawing, full assembly at ISO A3, click OK. We wanna bring in a home view and this time we'll do, let's see if it's one to two will fit. No, let's try one to one. And we can click that there. It's gonna be a shaded one here and turn that on. We need to bring in a bill of materials now. So click on tables, table, and drag and drop that right in the corner. Um, you can fix these balloons here when they come in by clicking on it and just moving these out of the way if you wanted to and putting that on there. Make sure you don't lose their association. You can type in here the sizes or you know, what the uh, finish size will be, or we can just leave it blank actually for now. We can insert our third angle projection symbol.
Okay, let's add a new page now. So we're gonna click quick add and we need to bring in a base view. And this time now we'll bring in a front view and this will be one to two. We're gonna say thread, show threaded uh, edges and turn hidden detail on. Click OK. We need in the tree over here now, we wanna show the handle. So we're gonna turn off the eye to the head and that there, and there's our handle there. We need to now do some projected view, create projected view. One, two, three, and click OK. This one here will need to be shaded. Um, I'm going to leave it at this size. I'm not going to scale it down. Okay, we've got plenty of real estate there. What we can do here now is actually put on some dimensions. So we're going to put a center mark straight away. So center mark on that one there. We can put a center line up through here. Once we do that, we can extend the center line so it comes through. Remember, if you pull or move it, it may need to be reassociated. That's okay, it hasn't come up. We can save that now. And click Save. Make sure you save it in the correct file. We put a center line up here as well. Click the center line, drag it just slightly past. Beautiful. Okay, these views will look the same anyway, but it will just show the three three angles okay we can zoom in now and put some the total length on this one here so from that corner escape dimension we want that edge there that edge there will be 280 zoom out now we can put these ones on here five Forty-five. We can move him out. So let's create a new sheet. Uh, the quick add button down the bottom here. We're gonna bring in a base view and we're gonna bring in a top view and it's gonna be one to one. And once again, make sure you got thread edges turned on and we're gonna see hidden detail. Click on our screen, click okay. We need to turn off the some icons over here, the, the eye on the other side. We don't want the handle, we don't want the head and we don't want the aluminium. All right, we could probably actually suppress those parts, but look, we can just hide them for now. It's not, it's not a big deal. We need to rotate this view, okay? So we highlight that view, click modify, rotate. We're gonna click the corner 
and we can rotate that around to where we want it. We want it at about 90 degrees. Click OK. We're going to move that view up here now. We're going to project down and across. Create projected view down. Actually, we might move that one up here. And we're going to bring one out to the side as well. And click OK. So now we can drag this one down. And this view will now become our front view, top view, and right side view. Okay, as you can see, hidden details turned on. We can actually get a projected view as well to get this isometric view up here. And I'm going to click OK, activate that, and turn that on. Once again, you could make that half scale, but um, look, there's that much real estate on an A3 sheet at one to one. Um, you know, I think it's fine the way it is, okay? Okay, let's name our views. Capital letters turned on. The title block is already automatically filled out from the previous sheet. Okay, see here it's filled out the other one as well, so you didn't have to do it twice because you already did it once over here, which is a great little thing. So we've got our views, named our views. We could probably move that view up a little bit, to be honest with you, and across, uh, get them back in line again. Remember the view should be in line. Okay, let's put some uh, center marks on here, some geometry marks, so center mark, because it's a di it's a circle. We can put on here a center line across the part. Uh, remember, this one didn't go all the way through, so we need to extend it. Okay, we need to fix that. I didn't pick that up. I typed that in wrong, but let's amend that. That should be a 10, not a 20. Sorry about that. And I'm going to reassociate this. I'm going to put it up in here and then move this up here. All right. So we can see that that's being tapped as well. All right. Okay, I'm just going to pop into the model for a second and just check something out in here. I'm just going to do a section analysis. So inspect. So what I've done, I've just looked at this hidden detail here and it's just something doesn't look right. So I'm just going to inspect with the section analysis. I'm going to click on this face here and just pull it in here and have a look. Okay, and we zoom in here and just want to have take a look at this. So yeah, I just wanted to see how deep that cut when I did that uh, combined. And you can see here, it's nearly spot on. So look, I'm happy with that. I'll ignore my, I can turn off that section analysis now. All right, pop back into my drawing. I can save that. If I open my drawing now, it's warning me to update. See up here in Fusion? See here, I've got a yellow warning. It's just come up on the screen now. So we click up here on the little triangle and that will update the drawing to reflect any changes that I made in the model. And that's the beauty of parametric modeling. Everything is linked and associated with, I think, look, I think we could put that dimension on there if you wanted to. And a let's do it from the center line here. That's probably better. You can work that out then. Yep. 16 subtract 12.5 is 3.5. That's correct.
click save, let's move on. Okay, quick add. Last but not least, we're gonna put in the base view again and top view one more time. This will be two to one. Over to the right hand side, we'll turn the eye off. We'll just do the aluminium one for this one. Let's rotate it. Notice it's not throwing the threaded edges, so we need to turn show the threads on. On both of those. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've now finished our 3D model. We've now finished our 2D drawings of our soft face mallet. And it's time to go out to the workshop, use the lathe and milling machines, and let's make this. I hope you enjoyed that series, and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye-bye.